He understands the political, legal, and business environment in Spain, Portugal, Morocco, Africa, and the Middle East, being currently the senior advisor of LLYC and AgroFarm. So please welcome Jaime Gil Robles. Coming with Jose Maravel. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you, the organization, to invite me to participate on on this speech that's supposed to be a chat with Jose Maraver, uh, who's the CEO of Canaveira, one of the licensed medical licensed company here in Portugal. And the purpose of the meeting is to share with you our experience on how to develop. Ah, oh, sorry. Okay, that's fine. So, as was mentioned, the purpose of, the, of this chat with Jose is to share experience with you on how complicated it is to run and to get a medical license uh, cannabis and to get profitable uh, business, okay? Uh, prior to that, I would like also to introduce AgroFarm. AgroFarm is uh, the company when I'm working with them on supporting all the conversation that they have with investors. AgroFarm purpose is to cover at 36, 30, 60 degrees all the cannabis business from legal, from business perspective, from lighting, from electricity, genetics, climate, all the things that you need or all the farmers or the investor need to run a, cannab a medical cannabis business in Spain and in Portugal, where they have a large experience. Um, if I'm not wrong, uh, it's running at least three cannabis licensed companies in uh, Portugal, but they're also working in two other projects in Spain. Okay, so welcome. Thank you for coming, Jose, and to, to share with me this, this chat. Uh, if I would like to start, it's what is for you AgroFarm? Yeah, thank you for the invitation, Jaime, to speak today at Portugal Medical Cannabis. And I'd like to congratulate the organization also for the event. Uh, as you mentioned, AgroFarm does cover the whole process from construction to implement a medical project in Portugal. And Instead of dealing with a few companies, you can just rely on one company and they'll, they'll cover the whole process from planning to execution. They can help you out also with genetics and other kind of contacts that you will need to, to set up a project in Portugal. So how, how do you get, how, how do you arrive to, to AgroFarm? Which was the momentum in, in your business when you decide that AgroFarm can be your partner? So we had a, our project was designed by us and we were looking for constructors, but we couldn't find a, a company that was able to manage the whole process. For some of them, it was so new, for, for some of them was so complicated. Then we luckily met Rafa from AgroFarm and since the very beginning, it was a no brainer for us to, to come along with AgroFarm and, and develop our project. They do understand all of the technical details and the discussions with them were so interesting for us as well. Yeah, so you mean um, for you guys, you have running your own business. So Agrafan uh, helped you to finally move what you had in the business plan to become real. Yeah, we had everything was planned and designed by us, but no company was able to build our, our project the way we intended. Mm -hmm. So it's only because AgroFarm appeared that we are able to be constructing now our facilities, our dream facilities, and they've improved a little bit our facilities as well because it's been a few months discussing the technical details mm -hmm. and this is always changing and evolutioning. So next year we will be optimizing our facilities as well. 
This is a long run. So because uh, at the end, um, as uh, you and I leave this experience to have the tough pressure of the investors, and business plan looks always lovely, uh, but the reality is when you start building your installation or to found providers, it's always a little bit mess. Uh, one I recognized when I was starting working with them is they provide me all the solution that it was quite difficult for us, and I'm coming from the business side, so the business side always don't have the full picture about all kind of provider. That was also your experience? Yeah, this is not something you can do in a couple of days back home. This is a few years process to set up a, a project like this. Not only in Portugal, but whatever you want to set it up. And talking about how complicated it is to, to bring a project alive, uh -huh. of course we have deadlines, we have objectives in mind. We would have loved to be in the market in 2020. It's just not so easy. We had COVID and everything. We have investors. Um, and we have to give answer to the people, not only the investors, but the workers at the company. We, we have our patients in mind. And of course, this is gonna take you a long time. It's been three years and a half for us. It's not easy. Every day we have to work a lot to, to make this happen. And from outside, it might look so easy. There is a nice video playing on, on the back and it looks like everything is done already. But we are encountering problems every day, uh, not only at the construction site, but on the regulation side, um, everywhere. Luckily, Agrofan has a, a huge team and they are working with a, a couple of companies. So they, they do provide every solution that is needed. Mm. I'm trying to think about problems that we, we found during the construction. Biggest problem is that a couple of days ago we had a thunderstorm mm -hmm. and during the evening we couldn't move along with the work. That's all the delay we have. So Agrofarm is really excelling in the execution of the, the project and I hope to be able to start Kickstarter production by October. Mm -hmm. So in this line, which are the main objective of Canaveda? Of course, keep confidential what you need to be confidential, even if we're surrounded by friends. No, no but not, not many things that are confidential. I think it's very clear our, our objective is to supply the medical market. Mm -hmm. in, uh, we're focusing in Europe, no intentions to go outside of the EU border. And we intend to be market leaders in Portugal and Spain, which is our home countries, right? Mm, obviously now the biggest market in Europe is Germany, but all the DAC German speaking area in Europe, they are developing the industry, not only the medical. And Switzerland, Poland, the UK or Germany are the ma main markets at the moment in Europe. I was listening yesterday to the talks here and there were many people asking why do we not have products in Portugal? It's on our side, on the, on our, on the company side of course. It's not easy to register a, a product in Portugal. We are not producing yet, but uh, as soon as we harvest, it's gonna take a couple of weeks for us to bring the product to Germany. In comparison, it's gonna take six to nine months to register a product in, in Portugal. So we will be working hard to register in Portugal, but expect Canaveira to bring products outside of Portugal mm -hmm. first. The same as all of the other companies. We have here Steven George, he was the, the first people person in, in Portugal to register a product. I've talked to him, I know it's not easy. Mm, it's not a problem with Infarmed. They, they could make it easier, but uh, it's on our side. We have to register the product. It does make sense and it's one of the most advanced ways to, to access cannabis in Europe. So I think we should keep on pushing and expect our products to be in Portugal as soon as we are able. So I'm, I'm fully agree with you and, and with Steve. Uh, I think the future is we have a lot of licensed medical companies uh, already in Portugal. There is a potential in the market. I think uh, definitely we need to work with Infarmed. But speaking about Infarmed, how was your experience with Infarmed? Mm. I don't know if there is somebody so from Infarmed here. <laughs> <laughs> we will be very politically correct about that. No, but because it's so easy to be politically correct with Infarmed because I'm originally from Spain. The medical agency in Spain is so secretive. It's so hard to talk to them. Their interpretation of the law is so complicated. 
and I'm really happy that I came to Portugal in 2018 to set up this project, because not only Informed, but all of the regulatory agencies and bodies in Portugal, they are doing such a nice job. Since 2001, Portugal has been leading the reform when it comes to international laws and, and drug regulation. In 2018, Portugal demonstrated again that this is a leading country when it comes to modernizing society. And I think all of the authorities are being so responsive, working on time. We have no delays with Informed. Uh, it's very clear from their side as well. And I'm very happy to be working with Informed and not in Spain. Well, de definitely, I think we, we all agree that for investors, it seems easier to work in Portugal than to do it in Spain. And I see numbers are very clear on the number of licenses and the developing. But uh, following on the on the conversation, I think we all uh, this this new regulation in in Portugal. Do you think it will be an opportunity for the current medical licensed companies? You mean the recreational? As I was saying, Portugal has been leading since 2001, and it's been already three or four years we're discussing in the parliament the recreational reform. There is some examples already in the world, like Canada, Uruguay, Switzerland is developing now a, a program, or the Netherlands. And again, Portugal is probably the most serious country when it comes to regulating. We are in the European Union, and the authorities here are so responsible. It's a no-brainer that legalization is going to come, not today, not tomorrow, but it's going to come someday. So I, see, I, I don't see why not regulating cannabis for adult use. I don't think the, the government is going to be responsible as they've been already. And yeah, I'm all about it. Yeah, I, I, I think we, maybe we all agree that if Portugal already developed a cannabis industry, a medical cannabis industry, it will be logical to understand that these local companies that generate employment and richness take profit also of this business. Uh, but do they need the, the industry to show examples of how to do better and how the market it's supposed to be for this recreational, because we know that they want, but nobody is, has a clear idea of how they want. In the ideal world, if you were able to write the, the, the law, how, how do we, you can imagine the reality of this recreational uh, market? I, I'm, I'm not a legislator. I have no idea how it's best to, to regulate an industry like this. From our user point, I think it's obvious we need to regulate cannabis for adult use. Uh, it's only going to be positive for society, for the user, for the government. It's going to be cal back lots to society. Canavera, we are focused on the medical um, arena. If recreational comes online, we, ha we will have to think about it. We will probably come online also. But uh, we are not focused on the recreational at the moment. Great. <clears throat> so if we make a step back, uh, one of the things that uh, we have this conversation with the, with the investors, it's always based on the location. I don't know if you had this experience, but s some of the conversation uh, that we had in, in, in AgroFarm with investors, they always said, okay, I want to create uh, an installation in my land because it's a lovely land, because I'm the owner, and how complicated it is to find the correct location for a medical cannabis installation. Which, uh, under your point of view, are the key requirements if there are investors on the room uh, where you need to pick this, this piece of land? There is no perfect location. Um, you will always face problems. You will always have to tune your facilities and genetics to be able to grow cannabis. But as Slomo was telling, you don't grow mangoes in Canada. So this is the big picture. I've been farming tropical and subtropical crops for the last 12 years. And obviously, cannabis does not grow the same everywhere. I see many companies in Portugal, they are located by the ocean. They, think, they might think um, more temperate temperatures is, is better for them. 
humidity is going to be so tough to overcome. Your facility is going to be prepared to support the, the salty, the salt from the ocean. We are located in the interior part. It's desertic, but we have bigger range of temperatures than in the coast, but it's so dry during the winter and during the summer. We have 280 days a year of sun, little rain, lots of water. It's one of the most prolific agricultural places in Portugal, Beira Baixa. And location is key, but you will always face problems. So if you don't know how to grow cannabis, just look for someone that knows how to do it. If you have a property already, it's probably the worst property you can set up the, the project because it wasn't bought for this. So take your time, look for the place, think about all, all of the possibilities, what's going to happen. The ocean is not good. They call it ocean grown, OG, but it, it, it's because it was so hard to grow by the ocean. So don't go close to the ocean. So that, that is also um, a, a, a very good piece of uh, advice. Uh, what about the relation with the local authorities? I remember when we started our project, uh, it took two years to found the proper location because you need electricity. No a simple point of electricity. We need at least two, three caveas at minimum and not all the electric network in Portugal can cover these, these needs. You need water. But I think we always forget how important it is that the local authorities support the project. Because it's, if you don't do it properly, it could be a, an issue, a political issue, a social issue. So you need to be aligned with the political of... Uh, how was your experience? Yeah, absolutely. Mm, I think you guys seen Fundao is sponsoring this event, and this is amazing for us that the municipality is coming and showing support for the industry, not only for us, but the whole industry. When we arrived to Fundao, they had no idea about cannabis, but they were so open to listen. They welcomed me in the incubator of, of companies in Fundao, and they were such a nice, huge help for the project. Lots of advising, lots of contacts. They helped us looking for properties, and they are still working for us, or with us, kind of. No? And, and the other companies in Fundao, because this is not a one-to-one -one relation, this is for all of us. Mm, I think it's key that authorities, including municipality of Lisbon or Fundao, they do support the industry, wherever you are. I've heard many problems in, in some locations, mm, but all I got is good words for Fundao. Fundao is not just the cherry place, but it's becoming the cannabis place. Mm -hmm. uh, you can go here in Cascai and, and buy cherries from our place, so soon you'll be able to buy cannabis too. And this is something the municipality is so proud about it. So I think this is the way forward and we should all look for situations like this. Yeah, it, 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 it's important also uh, to mention that uh, we really see a huge, uh, a lot of medical companies that are investing here we are still in found enough talent to cover the key positions, but it's quite hard tough to find people. There are licensed on pharmaceutical with degrees on quality. That's a key element and, and the experience. So Portugal seems to be still be, or do you think the wave already finished? Do you expect more um, medical companies try to ask for new license? I hope so. Like many people tell me, are, aren't you worried that there is many companies in Portugal growing cannabis or trying to grow cannabis? I mean, you cannot call it an industry unless you have an industry. And the industry is supposed to be made out of companies. Mm, there is no market if there is no companies. There is no companies if there is no market. We need companies. I want to look at Europe and see how Portugal is the epicenter of the cannabis industry. This is only going to happen if we have 100 companies, 200 companies, manufacturing companies, cultivation companies, distribution companies, and I'm all about it. I, I want to see them in Portugal, not in Spain. <laughs> definitely, definitely. We are all agree on that. 
So, Jose, thank you very much for thank sharing, you. For sharing uh, this chat. Hope I've been useful for you. Maybe there is somebody who wants to make questions? Yes, we have right over here. A hand in the ear. It's coming, the microphone. Estando, som, som. <laughs> Hello. Uh, thank you very much for your sharing. Uh, I would like to take this last speech um, about the difference between Spain market and Portuguese market. Once you work, uh, we, we, if you know a little bit about agriculture market in Spain, we face a lot of cooperatives, uh, co-working. They work very well together. Unfortunately, here in Portugal, the agri-pharma business, they are very straight on their own business. How you can uh, achieve this uh, really cooperative uh, market to put Portugal, in fact, uh, in, uh, with the flag of cannabis industry for the market? For me? For, for sure. Yeah, so I, I, I've worked with cooperatives in the Canary Islands for banana, and, and tomato and avocado. Yeah, you're right, there is many cooperative spirit in, in Spain. We do not have it here in Portugal. It, it hasn't worked historically in Portugal. But when it comes to the cannabis industry in Portugal, we do have an association of producers. Canaveira is not part yet of the association, but we intend to be part of the association. And this is a forum to discuss and, and organize it in, in ourselves. On the side, I, I try to do networking all the time I invite everyone to our table to sit down and have lunch with us, and I try to connect everyone also. I think you know that, Fabrizio. So I think this is the way forward. Like, there is no competition. I see no competition. There is lots of space for all of us in the market. All we can do is synergies and strengthen each other. I want to see Portugal like, as a company, not myself as a company. Thank you. More questions? Please raise your hand. So, oh, yeah. Thank you very much for sharing uh, your experience. Um, I think it was Steve talked before about how GMP operations are very capex intensive. Uh, from your experience, uh, how was the fundraising process and what advices could you share with us? Uh, because I think that perhaps is the, the most difficult ingredient. And if you may, I also will make another question. Um, uh, Jaime talked a little bit about this problem. Uh, we are facing now in, Port in Portugal uh, a huge problem regarding uh, qualified labor and non-qualified labor. Uh, since you are uh, building an operation in Fundão, what strategy do you foresee for your project regarding uh, recruitment? Thank you. So regarding the fundraising, there was a time where there was lots of money on the table. Other days, there's no money on the table. We had a big problem in 2020. 18 March, we were supposed to close with the bank uh, financial offer from them. 13 March, the whole world closed down. We stayed for six months trying to decide what to do from home. After that, we decided to go holidays, kind of. Just leave it on pause for a couple months. And only last year we kick-started again with the project. So we started the fundraising. I've heard many options. You can buy companies, you can buy a license, you can buy a, a, a property only, or you can invest in a team, right? And this is linked to the next question. Investors invested in our team, not in the company, not in the license, not in the, in the place, right? So how do I see it? We choose the location is five minutes from Fundao. There were other places that were 30 minutes from Fundao, but 75% of the team, we already have it. It's people we have worked for the last 10, 15 years with. Um, on the other hand, we're, the rest of the people is gonna be local people from Fundao. There is couple universities in Fundao, not in Fundao, but in Covillán, Castelo Branco, which are 20, 30 minutes away from, from us. And they are so strong in biotechnology and pharmaceutical science. So we have 
pretty much all we need in Fundao. Come to Fundao. Thank you. Any other questions? A yes in the back. Can you raise your hand again, please, so that it can see you? Okay, thank you. Yes, uh, Jose, it's a pleasure to hear you on stage, uh, understanding that you have a project underway and that you're building a facility in Fundao, Castello Branco, it's a very good area for this sort of thing, so good for you. And uh, you said you're inviting people to sit uh, for lunch, uh, so where are we having lunch? See you later at the door. Okay, we, perfect. Thank you. Just come with us. Muchísimas gracias. De nada. <laughs> okay, now you have your lunch agreed. Any other questions? If not, I would say all we need is an applause for the panel. Thank you.